so we'll continue with the previous lesson which was the earthquake if you have not watched the first half i request you to please go back to my channel and watch the video there so we'll begin with the other half today so let's begin with it they have not found her my uncle said the wild animals bridge don't look like that she's dead but we must find her i shouted bridge get a grip on yourself uncle pleaded in the last para we had seen that bully was not present in those dead bodies so what did the uncle say they have not found her maybe the wild animals must have eaten her so please don't look like that bridge she is dead so you don't think that your sister is alive she's gone but we must find her so what did bridge do it was just a 2 year old baby he couldn't just leave his sister there so what did he say we must find her so uncle pleaded him get a grip on yourself what does it mean he meant take hold of your emotions or control your emotions but i was beyond reasoning i ran back to the village to the spot where my house had stood there was still so much debris i scrambled around shifting the earth and stones how long i was on my knees searching crying searching but he was beyond reasoning bridge couldn't control his emotions after all he, it was his own young sister so he ran back to the village and he went to his house where that place was or where his house was he went there and he stood there and there was so much of debris there the waste particles he started picking it up and shifting it the stones the earth the dust the mud everything he started shifting he just wanted to search his sister he was on his knees he didn't know for how long he was just searching and crying and searching he was just continuing the same thing boy it is no use a voice said the speaker was the army officer who had supervised the relief operation there is no one alive in there he said whom are you looking for suddenly he heard a voice boy it is no use so who was that person it was the army officer who had supervised the relief operation the main the main leader he came there and he said there is no one alive in there so you whatever you are doing you are searching stop it by the way whom are you looking for he is asking whom are you looking for my sister sahib i said fighting to control my tears all i want is to give her a proper cremation i stopped conscious that i was babbling i could see that he was bone tired he looked as if he had not slept for days his uniform was covered with dust his face was grimy but through all the dust and grime i saw that his eyes were kind so what did brit say it is my sister sahib he was controlling his tears he was trying not to cry in front of him he he said it was my sister sahib and all i want to do is give her a proper cremation that is a proper burial or a funeral that's all i want for her i stopped conscious that i was babbling he stopped saying anything why because he thought that he's just babbling what do you mean by babbling just speaking something he didn't know what he was talking he was out of his senses then he looked at the army officer and he realized that the army officer was completely tired bone tired means complete tired he looked as if he had not slept for days why because he was clearing all the debris saving lives removing the dead bodies so his entire uniform was covered with dust his face was grimy what does it mean he was very tired but in all that dust and grime and everything that was covered with he saw that his eyes were kind he was very kind and generous and humble that person the army officer my men have been on their feet for days he said softly as if talking to himself they have done all they could here 
tomorrow at daybreak we go to another village just like this then another he looked away at the sun setting behind the peaks down in the valley the pyres burnt row upon row the officer muttered something shook his head and turned away a terrible despair engulfed me i lay there among the ruins of my house and cried so now what did the army officer said my men have been on their feet for days he is telling my men that is the other army officers they were working from so many days they didn't stop he said softly as if talking to himself he said it very softly then he told they have done all they could here that is they tried their level best to save as many lives as they could and tomorrow at daybreak that is tomorrow early morning we will go to another village and same thing again and from there another village this process continues it's never stopping for them he looked away at the sun setting behind the peaks and in the down the valley what did they see the pyres burned what are pyres it's the heap of the funeral that is all the dead bodies were collected row after row they used to keep them and burn them so it is the pyres were burning so officer said something he muttered something that is say very softly so that no one can hear he said something very softly he shook his head and he went away so this person or uh, bridge he was standing there and a terrible despair engulfed me what is engulfed swallowed him what was that he was very sad he didn't know what to do he had lost his entire family there he was completely in sadness he just sat there and he was crying he that was the only thing that he could do there 10 minutes later the officer was back with him were three soldiers armed with spades and crowbars without a word the men began removing the debris they labored doggedly when it was completely dark someone brought a few lit petromax lamps two hours later a soldier called out sahib 10 minutes later that officer came back and he came back with three soldiers and they were having spades and crowbars spades is nothing but the shovel okay and uh, crowbars are nothing but the pine bars so using these two they dig the earth they came with that without a word the men began removing the debris so they did not speak anything they just started with their work they labored very hardly with lot of effort doggedly what is with lot of effort so they started working and it became dark the sun set so what they could do in the dark so someone brought a few lit petromax lamps it's nothing but some few lamps the lights he brought and after 2 hours one soldier called out sahib he shouted he stood in the middle of a small hollow the wall had caved in at that spot i recognized a part of a door beneath it a small foot feverishly the soldiers began to clear the hollow then they lifted the door she is alive someone said bridge realized that they were standing in a middle of a small hollow what is hollow a small hole so that wall had caved in at that spot that is when the wall fell there was a little space below it and he recognized a part of a door which used to be there before so in that he saw one small foot one small baby's foot and the soldiers feverishly that is excitedly they began to clear the hollow they were so happy that they could find one more maybe she is alive or dead they didn't know but they could help they were happy so when they then they lifted the door and when they lifted the door someone shouted she is alive it was a miracle she had been buried under the debris for 116 hours she had survived the earthquake the cold nights and the wild animals 
A ragged cheer went up as the soldier wrapped her in a warm blanket and carried her to the tent where a makeshift hospital had been set up. Bully lived. The next day I went to thank the army officer, but he was gone. I did not even know his name. So it was a complete miracle that small baby was buried under that under that debris for 116 hours and she survived the earthquake the cold nights and even the wild animals so the people the soldiers were so happy they gave a tired or a rough cheer you know they were really tired but still they were happy then the soldier wrapped her in a warm blanket and they took her to the makeshift hospital so that the treatment is given to her so bully lived and the next day bridge wanted to thank the army officer so he went to thank him but what happened he was gone he did not know his name also my sister and i went to live with my uncle soon after i got a job at a dhaba near panipat bully stayed back she started going to school it waited on me that i never thanked that army officer i hope that one day i would run into him again every time i saw an army man i would hope it was him for months i would search for his face in every crowd and one day i did find him my sister and i went to live with my uncle so after that day the sister bully and even bridge went and stayed with her uncle in panipat and over there uh, sorry in pauri so over there what happened soon after he got a job in that dhaba near panipat and bully stayed with the uncle itself only bridge moved away she started going to school so bridge had something in his heart what was it it waited on me it means that he was sad about something there was something in him the guiltiness about what that he never got to thank that army officer who saved bully so he was hoping that one day he could meet that person and he could thank him so every time he saw an army man he would hope it was him so whenever he could see any army man passing around he he would hope that hopefully this person is that same person who saved my sister and i could th- i i will go and thank him but he could not for months he was searching that face in every person and one day what happened he did find him he found him it was late on a winter's night a truck stopped at the dhaba a man got out he looked familiar when he stepped into the light i saw that it was not him just someone who bore a strong resemblance the man was tired he asked for a cup of tea as i served him sahib i felt the strange lightness the sense of joy when the man offered to pay i did not take the money the next day it happened again every day i would see someone a complete stranger a tired traveler reminded me of that officer it was as if he was everywhere and every time i served him tea i felt a surge of sheer joy it was late on a winter's night so a truck came and stopped in that dhaba and a man got out from that truck and he looked familiar maybe he knew him so when he stepped into the light he saw that it was not that army officer who had saved him saved his sister it was someone who had a strong resemblance i mean his face was somewhat similar to that person but it was not him and he was very tired so he came and he asked for a cup of tea so when this person bridge served him the tea he felt a strange lightness he felt happy there was a sense of joy so when the man offered to pay him for the tea he did not take the money so the next day it happened again every day i would see someone he could see someone a complete stranger or a tired traveler or an any army officer every person reminded him of that officer so what he would do he would serve them tea and it would give him happiness 
he was happy about it and he would never take money for it a month later i quit my job at the dhaba and returned to those mountains the dhaba owner was quite relieved he had no use for a waiter who kept forgetting to present the bill to the customer now i am on my own and i am at peace here is your bus sahib no no money you were tired all i offered you was a cup of tea maybe it was the best tea in all garhwal maybe not but i'm happy i could do you to this small service wish you a safe journey sahib may god be with you for a month he worked there and then after a month he left that job he quit that job and he returned back to those mountains so the dhaba owner was very happy that he went why who wanted a person who wouldn't give bill to his customers now imagine your work any dhaba or any restaurant over there if you go and have a, eat something or drink something and the waiter doesn't come and give you the bill obviously the owner will shout at the waiter correct so it was the same thing so the owner was very happy that he is gone now what happened this person was at peace bridge was very happy he was relaxed why now he doesn't have to answer to anybody he is on his own and suddenly the bus comes so he says here is your bus sahib and i think he offered him some money so he says no no i don't need any money you were tired and all i did was offer you a cup of tea i just wanted to give give you a small service maybe it was the best tea in garhwal he tells maybe in this area this is my best the best tea that you will find in this area or may not be also but i am very happy that i could do something for you so thank you i don't need your money and he wishes him safe journey he says have wish you a safe journey sahib may god be with you so he is giving him blessings also so this was the story of bridge so if you do like this video please like comment and subscribe to it thank you